One of the good things about mixed reality is it allows you to capture a moment in time. So the example of sunsets is a good one because you can maintain that, that moment of sunset. You can have that and you can shoot all day long. You could shoot all day in a volume and have the same, same level of light, the same quality of light. What this volume consists of? What, what, what is it made of? How that, that works in reality, in practice? So there's, I'd say, three main parts to, to, to an LED volume. There's your, your playback engine. So uh, that can be static plates or animated plates, um, which are just images. Uh, you get an LED part to the volume, obviously, and this is what is producing your environment, what's playing back your environment. Um, and in this case, we've got a, a 30 meter by five meter LED wall at the back here, and this is the in-camera LED wall. This is what our cameras will see. This is a Row Ruby 2.3 mil LED, uh, and we picked this specifically because it's a really good quality of image out of it. The, the, the colors are excellent. Um, it's got really good viewing, uh, off-axis viewing um, qualities to it, uh, and it, it, it generally gives us a very clean color reproduction through and through the system. Then for the other LEDs in the volume, we pick a different kind of LED. We, we pick a, a, a CB5, uh, which is a row carbon five, uh, and that's designed to have good colors uh, and bright output, light, bright light output. Uh, and that's important because we're using those for illumination and for reflection. So the properties of the LED are very different between the in-camera LED and the outer camera LED. So, yeah, hence the combo. So the, the outer, cam, outer camera LEDs are made up of, of three bits. We've got the wings. These are mobile screens that we can move into position and tilt them to get reflections and, and light sources exactly where we need them. We've got the ceiling LED here. Uh, this is on soft start motors, so it can be moved up and down. We can angle it and get it exactly where we want it, particularly useful in car shoots because we can get it right over, the, right over the car and get the reflections exactly where we want them. Uh, and then the back wall. Uh, is, a, is a wrap around that covers the whole of the back area. So if you've got someone wearing a motorbike helmet or uh, you know, something that is a curved surface and you need that back reflection covering your horizon, uh, then that's what that, that, that covers. Then we've also got a tracking system in here, which is a Moses star tracker. So we've got a constellation of stars stuck up on the roof there. Uh, and that tracks the camera as it's moving around in 3D space. So if we've got a real-time rendered environment, a 3D environment such as an unreal environment, then we track the camera's position and we render the perspective of that camera's position in the virtual environment to make sure that it's accurate on the screens so we get the appropriate parallax. He mentioned so many LEDs and they have a certain sort of colorimetry reproduction capabilities. How is that going to work in this environment and where your lighting is coming in? But when it comes to craft lighting and actually producing contrast and interest and quality color rendition on the subjects, I would still recommend highly using more traditional sources from HMI to tungsten to high quality LED. In this stage here, we are supplementing all the lighting using a mixture of orbiters and sky panel range. And what this does is it, firstly, it gives interesting images and not just flat images, but it also means that the color information coming off the subjects is far more accurate than if you were just lighting it with the LED video panels. I, I heard a lot of people commenting about the, 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 the top lighting uh, with LEDs. So, I mean, there is a kind of uh, divided opinion. So what would be your suggestions for our production? So the idea behind this stage was flexibility. We, we installed an infrastructure, which means that, yes, you can have just video panels or just sort of more conventional LED and tungsten HMI products, but it's easy to do. Efficiency is sort of built into this space, whereas before you might be rigging for three days before the production, what we tried to do here is allow it to be more, for it to be possible to be done in a day, essentially, or in a couple of hours. So Tom mentioned earlier on this ceiling slab in the, mentor, in the middle of the stage, we have um, installed 16 soft start motors, which give us millimeter accuracy on the height of the slab. It also means we can reproduce the exact height over and over again and make those slight adjustments and then record all that information, which hopefully will be quite useful for the guys in the VFX department as well. We all understand very much that data is so important on set and it's coming not just from the cameras, not just from the lights, but the robotic systems and the studio itself now. And things like the 3D engines from Epic or Unity, the more data that you can put into those systems, 
the more valuable those assets become. And they can be reused and they can be transferred, not just for film and TV, but also into the gaming community. And vice versa, the assets that are produced for video games can also be then reversioned and used in film and television. The choice of lenses and cameras, how does that work in the context of everything that uh, you both told me so far? Well, I think we're quite lucky as Ari that our color signs and not just on the camera side, but in our lighting fixtures, really give a sort of strong guarantee to production that they can create these beautiful images and that, again, the data that's coming out of the cameras and out the lights reassures the production, the VFX, the pre, the post, the production itself, that the quality of image is going to be to the standard they need. So how good is uh, Ari at color science? But from my experience using all the hardware in this environment, it seems like a very good marriage for these types of environment. What, what we're seeing, especially on the large format sensors and our cameras and our lenses, the signature primes and signature zooms, is we're seeing a, a much cleaner image with a lot less artifacts. What do we need to do that we really can complete the job in camera, on the set, and after that just do the, do the yeah. grading? You take a chunk of the work that you do in post and you move that into your pre-process. So an important part is pre-visualizing that understanding what shots you want to achieve and then making sure that you're engineering the technology and engineering the environment to achieve those shots. So by taking that post process, you can start planning earlier and by embracing that, that early planning stage, you can get some really good results. Uh, you can start with your previews, use that process of previews to work out where the shots are gonna be and then build upon that when you go into your, either, either your plate stage or into your modeling stage and then by the time it comes to actually pointing a camera at your talent, everyone knows what they're trying to do. So it's just a case of just filming it. And it's all about the talent at that point. And you've got most of your work done. You, everyone knows what the plan is. You shoot it. And then it, it, sa it, it potentially, if embraced properly, can save time and money because you, you're working to an end goal. Everyone's aiming at the same thing. Uh, and it, it can get really good results. Reflections can be bet uh, better. I mean, reflections are difficult anyway to achieve. <laughs> um, getting decent lighting by having uh, your environmental lighting, a base level of lighting coming from the environment, you sort of, you, you get a good starting point, a good foundation. Uh, and without too much more work on top of that, you can get a very credible looking lighting look. Instead of starting from scratch with no lighting, you've sort of got a base level there that you're working to. But I think people like being able to see the environments when they come into the studio. It makes a big difference for the talent, to the producers, yeah. to everyone on set, that they know the environment they're shooting in again. We're putting a, a lot of discipline and sort of planning into the pre, so that when you enter the stage and you're doing production, you know exactly what you're doing, you know exactly the running, the running order of which you're gonna be shooting in. And I mean, you could shoot out of sequence, in sequence, but the point of doing it in these environments, it's very controlled. You're not, you know, risking that the weather's gonna be bad or there's a COVID breakout in the location that you are planning to shoot in, or, you know, political unrest or anything like that. What you're doing is you're... you're global pandemic. The global pandemic, exactly. You're taking all the risk of shooting on location and you're controlling it. And hopefully actually handing a little bit more creativity back to the creatives, whilst also maintaining an efficiency and cost effectiveness. Yeah. Any last word from two of you? It's been a real pleasure working with Ari. I think it's an outstanding collaboration. Um, it, it's nice from my side to be working alongside people who understand the camera technology better than anyone else in the industry, um, understand the lighting, and really complement the technologies that CT bring to this sort of collaboration. So I think it works well as a partnership. <laughs>